a very fine good evening all just in a minute we'll start the sessions please stay tuned at 7 o'clock we'll be starting the session a very fine good evening all of you let's start the session it's 7 o'clock so today we'll be having a demo session this demo session is a part of the crash course which is being organized by let's conquer it home science which is a virtual platform for ugc net jrf preparation myself kalevani durai raju i teach nutritional dietetics in lci i have qualified my ugc jrf in my very first attempt and the topic that we'll be discussing today is on obviously nutrition and dietetics and let's get into the topic so today since the session is going to be only for 30 minutes i'll be talking about two important topics very um, frequently uh, these topics very frequently come in your exams so these are antioxidants and phytochemicals all right so now what we will be seeing is that what is meant by antioxidants post that we'll be seeing the most commonly associated antioxidants that we usually see in the exam all right post that we'll be seeing phytochemicals also what is basically what what is meant by phytochemicals and a few examples that have already come from the year 2012 till 2021 okay now let us see the word antioxidants without getting before actually getting into the subject let us just break the words okay antioxidants okay let's divide it into two words anti oxidant now just try to understand what each uh, syllable means now if you take anti usually if you see this word a n t i it means against okay against against something so so against against what that we have to see right it is against oxidant means antioxidant matlab anything which will act against oxidation that we can call as an antioxidant but in nutrition and dietetic sense we talk about plant substances or plant molecules which have the capacity to prevent or neutralize oxidation okay so let us get into the thing which is written on the slide antioxidants they naturally occur meaning they are naturally present you don't have to synthesize them okay they are present in plant substances and these plant substances what do they do in our body no many metabolisms are happening there is fat metabolism carbohydrate metabolism protein metabolism along with that many other vitamin metabolisms to also happen now when this metabolisms happen as you know no machine in this world is 100 percentage efficient right so there will be by products or there will be um, damaging particles which will be excreted from those metabolisms so one of those things which are ex, uh, you cannot say excreted but they are kind of by products of metabolisms are these free radicals okay let us try to understand what is this free radicals are now if you see any molecule which is in equilibrium matlab there is no positive charge there is no negative charge such a molecule will not try to react with any other molecule whereas if you go for molecules which have either a positive or a negative charge they tend to act they tend to interact they tend to uh, either give or buy electrons from other molecules okay when that happens when this free radicals they go and they collect electrons or give electrons to particles to which they are not supposed to interact with that is when problems happen okay let's imagine 
say for example we take uh, fat membrane let's take the cell membrane okay cell membrane it consists of as you know a lot of fat molecules in which you can see mufa pufa all these things now if any of these free radicals goes and reacts with this plasma membrane what happens it damages the plasma membrane because these are free radicals positive charge ya negative charge dono mein ek hoga so they tend to react and they cause damage okay say for example if we see in a fat cell or in the cell wall of any cell if you take there is a layer of lipid membrane right so that can get damaged so once just think if the door to your house is damaged what will happen it's similar like that only so free radicals they are very harmful to body's metabolism but you should also remember that these free radicals are even naturally produced even in a very healthy person who does a lot of exercise who eats healthy these free radicals are produced but in a person who is having some other kind of a disease say for example diabetes or hypertension or obesity their level of free radical production is more compared to those people now let's get into the topic again what these antioxidants do is that they try to scavenge in other words they try to neutralize this free radicals charge okay because of this as we already saw it helps in preventing oxidation this oxidation is responsible for many other diseases also uh, many degenerative diseases specifically and also one important thing that leads to aging is oxidation okay now let us try to also understand what are the other functions that these antioxidants do or they help in improving okay now <clears throat> let's talk about immune function as you know immune immune or immunity when we speak about it is the power to fight against infection okay when we get some kind of an infection our immune cells uh, they become like warriors and they try to fight out that infection and help save us no so this immune function in order to improve immune function we need antioxidants okay and obviously to reduce the risk of infections also this infections can be multiple infections uh, ranging from a basic cold or it can be just an influenza or it can be as big infections like tetanus also you know next it can also help improve the cardiovascular function that is heart function okay your heart muscle functions and then antioxidants can help prevent cancer okay most of the antioxidants if you see the most commonly seen antioxidants they are they have anti cancerous properties as well okay so next then we see many other organ systems jaise we can speak about nervous system and also it improves digestive function it helps in improving blood sugar level meaning improving sugar level in the sense do not take that it increases sugar level it's nothing like that it helps in stabilizing the blood sugar levels meaning it helps in maintaining it at the range which is acceptable okay next it also helps in sexual health uh, prostate is one of the parts which is present in male reproductive system uh, if you have seen statistics bio statistics of cancer the one of the most commonly seen cancers in men after lung cancer is prostate cancer okay so having consuming a diet which is very rich in antioxidants it helps in decreasing the risk of prostate cancer it is also very important for maintaining skin health and eye health okay and one more thing that you have to also remember is a diet rich in antioxidants it helps in not showing the signs of aging meaning you can look even you can look like uh, you you look like 30 35 when you are 50 55 simple okay now let us talk about a few antioxidants which are most commonly uh, studied which are most commonly seen in exam okay one point just remember as we know antioxidants they are mostly present in plant substances only it can be seen in fruits and vegetables and whole grain cereals nuts like this and many other Uh, food groups it is present these antioxidants now let's talk about the most commonly read antioxidants in vitamins if we see vitamin a vitamin c and vitamin e these three vitamins and also beta carotene beta carotene is the uh, how to say it's a less little less bioavailable form of vitamin a it is a carotenoid okay vitamin a when we say vitamin a we uh, say about three different things it is retinol retinal and retinoic acid okay among which the most easily absorbable and the most easily bioavailable one is vitamin a but this beta carotene is also 
uh, it's even though it is not that easily bio uh, absorbed it is also abundantly present in foods so that we take that also into account other than that there are two minerals which have antioxidant property please remember this most of the antioxidants that we speak about are vitamins okay vitamins or carotenoids or it can be other phytochemicals but we do not speak about minerals when it comes to antioxidant function but supposedly there are two vitamins that is selenium and zinc which have antioxidant function okay and just i have a go through of lutein and lycopene as well these also have antioxidant functions now do not think that we have to read uh, this is a common advice for uh, all the subjects it's not just for nutrition and dietetics do not read too much in depth just uh, not for knowledge but i am not speaking about the knowledge part for in order to write ugc net exam and in order to pass get net or grf try to have a basic understanding of almost all the concepts but you don't have to go that much in depth you know into every concept because if you take antioxidants if you try to understand the mechanisms by which they uh, prevent oxidation that's going to be very difficult for you so just try to stick to the most important things that are repeatedly asked in exam now let's go into the next slide yes so let us speak about phytochemicals okay again like how we divided the word antioxidants let's divide the word phytochemicals okay phytochemicals meaning phyto whenever you see the word phyto in any content in any as a prefix it means from plants okay phyto means from plants so what we are trying to study here we are trying to study the chemicals which are obtained from plants okay so what do these chemicals do jo uh, chemicals naturally present hote hain in plants what do they do it can be responsible for color of the compound uh, sorry color of the food or it can be responsible for taste it can be responsible for aroma it can also be responsible for the flavor profile of the particular food okay simple let us divide the word phytochemicals chemicals which we get from plants these since we say plants they are naturally present and what is the main function they either give color or taste or aroma to the foods let it be fruits or vegetables now as i told you this antioxidants and phytochemicals they are very frequently asked in exam okay in uh, if you see uh, even though it is not asked every year at least once in two years this phytochemicals or antioxidants they usually come as a match the following okay now let's see uh, so before starting i'll give you a clear cut uh, idea of why i have given only these please understand i am not telling that these are the only phytochemicals or these are the only antioxidants which are there no it's not like that from 2012 till 2021 whatever questions have come related to phytochemicals and their sources this slide contains only that okay there are thousands and thousands of phytochemicals and antioxidants and their sources which we can study but these are the most important ones now let's go one by one first is alin alin is a compound which is present in garlic there is another compound also which is present in garlic which is allicin okay a l l i c i n alin and allicin these both are present in garlic okay now let's come to the second one flavones flavones these are present in onion but there is another important compound which is present in onion which is quercetin okay let me spell it out for you please note it down q u e r c e t i n quercetin okay this quercetin has not come before it is just an expected question now let's come to uh, betalin okay beetroot contains this coloring compound called betalin this has come at least 3 times in your exam so please put a star mark over here next if you see in carrots this there is presence of carotenoids you uh, if even if you are not a student of nutrition and dietetics you will very well know that beta carotin ka the most important source kya hai carrot okay there is another important source also for beta carotin 
which is yellow pumpkin okay yellow pumpkin is a very rich source of beta carotene so you can please note it down that as well now let's come to turmeric okay if you say turmeric turmeric contains curcumin and cumarin there are two compounds okay but please pay attention here since turmeric contains both of these compounds in case in exam both of these compounds if they come what will you do you have to choose the most abundantly present compound or the most biologically important compound okay so that is what it is curcumin okay now chlorophyll i don't think i have to explain what is chlorophyll to you you all of all of us we already know it's a green color giving pigment it is present in all green leafy vegetables obviously it is present in spinach and broccoli also as well now if you see cauliflower and turnip basically white colored vegetables what is present in this anthozanthins are present these anthozanthins can be slight yellowish in color to pale white okay next let's let's come to anthozanthins these anthozanthins these are purplish compounds red to red purplish compounds these are present in plums brinjal berries uh, and also uh, please pay attention to this thing brinjals hai na brinjals ko hum eggplants bhi keh sakte hain we can call that as eggplants also we can call it it can aubergines also so do not can get confused when they ask eggplant or aubergine they basically means brinjal only okay so plums brinjal and berries they are rich in what anthocyanins red to purplish red color compounds next see here this myoglobin i have told you people right that phytochemicals are only present in uh, this um, plant molecules but you have to remember this myoglobin is technically not a phytochemical but it is an important chemical it is an important coloring pigment which is present in meat products so i have included it here please do not think that it is a mistake i have deliberately added it here so that you can remember it along with the other compounds okay we cannot just separately give it somewhere else no so i have added it here only but please remember meat uh, this myoglobin it's not a phytochemical because phytochemicals are got uh, are obtained only from plants okay this myoglobin it is red in color it is present in meats okay in the flesh of the meats next let's come to lycopene lycopene is a compound it has antioxidant properties as well it is present in tomatoes in abundant amount it is also present in watermelon next let's come to asparagus asparagus is a english vegetable we usually do not eat this asparagus it contains glutathione okay asparagus it looks like um, just to give you an idea it looks like a small cactus with partitions okay it is a very seasonal vegetable you do not get it all the time it is available only for 2 weeks in a year and it's kind of a costly vegetable okay now let's come to spinach see here um, a single food source let's take spinach only for example spinach it contains chlorophyll also and it contains alpha lipoic acid also and it can come contain further more chemicals also so do not think that ek source mein sirf ek uh, ek fruit ya vegetable mein sirf ek hi phytochemical or ek hi antioxidant hoga it's not like that okay so spinach is a very good source of alpha lipoic acid actually potato is also a very good source of alpha lipoic acid so please note down now again see here allen allicin we have already seen that it is present in garlic garlic a uh, garlic also contains flavonoids okay and next it's come to corn in corn we can find xanthophyll also and cryptoxanthin also xanthophyll and cryptoxanthin are kind of yellow colored compounds okay next if we see green capsicum जैसे मैंने फॉर ब्रिंजल बताई थी ना कि ब्रिंजल को हम एक प्लांट भी बोल सकते हैं वी कैन कॉल इट एज ऑबिजन ऑल्सो सिमिलरली ग्रीन कैप्सिकम कैन बी कॉल्ड बेल पेपर ऑल्सो ओके सो इट्स इट्स जस्ट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन इंग्लिश एंड अमेरिकन लाइक ब्रिटिश एंड अमेरिकन इंग्लिश सो डू नॉट गेट कन्फ्यूज ग्रीन कैप्सिकम को हम बेल पेपर्स भी बोल सकते हैं ओके दिस इज इट कंटेन्स यूटिन ओके विद दिस द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स विच आर आस्ट रिगार्डिंग vitamins and chemicals topic is over now now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to show you another file that we provide in our paid classes okay the content that i have covered right now is a ppt which contains the basic things that have already come matlab jo bhi already aa chuka hai topics 
that I have covered with you in this free session. Now, uh, let me tell about the crash course. So, uh, starting from this 25th, that is 25th of March, say, we are going to start this Lakshay Batch 2.0. Uh, actually, we have named it 2.0 because it's the second time we are conducting this. We had successfully last time conducted this uh, Lakshay Batch crash course and we have got excellent results from that. So, we thought we'll retain the name. Again, coming back. 25th, the classes which are starting, if you join that, you will be getting the content that I'll be showing you right now. So, in the PPT, we saw only those things that have already come, right? But what is the guarantee that only those things are going to come? More multiple things can also come. Related topics can also be asked. Correct. So, if you join in, in our uh, live classes, I mean in the crash course classes, I will be giving you this document as well. This may more than uh, 150 different sources here, different flavonoids, uh, fla flavanols, and then there's ECCP. Many like that. I'm just giving you a glance of this document because there's no time to cover this. Uh, what I'll be giving in this is that all the important chemicals that may come in your upcoming exam, but it has not come till now. Okay, that I'll be giving you in this document. To make your job even more easier, what I'm going to do is that whichever I feel, whichever we educators feel is more important that I am going to highlight in red color which you can see on screen all the phytochemicals which I expect that are going to come in your exam that will be highlighted in red color so that in case at the end of the exam if you don't have time aapke paas time nahi hai to revise hai toh, you can just have a glance of these molecules which are marked in red and you can go to the exam okay to make your job easier and also to make it more time effective this we will be providing in your paid classes which will be happening from 25th of this month if you're interested to continue these classes if you're interested to start joining us you can give me a call or you can whatsapp me at the number just give me a minute i'll see if the number is there. yeah so the number is not there in case if you are interested if you are interested to join the crash course which is going to start from march 25th please give me a call or whatsapp at 7904015449 we'll be posting this number in the youtube comment section also uh, and now since there's five minutes five six minutes are left if any of you have any kind of a doubt in the topic that we have discussed now, you can give me a message in uh, the chat, live chat. I'll address the, the, the questions that you give now. Okay. I'm again repeating the classes are starting from 25th of this month. If you want to study with us, if you want access to exclusive study material, which is designed by UGCGRF qualified faculty, it will be great that you could join us from 25th of this month. I'm open for questions now. Please ask if you have any questions. Do you have any questions?
Yeah, I think there was a question asking for uh, how much antioxidants should be consumed in a day. Yeah, I think you are asking for the limit, I think, how much we have to consume. Uh, so, the technically, in uh, Indian RDA guidelines, if you see, there is no specific value which is given for antioxidants. Uh, but if you say, if you see USDA guidelines, there is this value which is given, but again, I am saying it is not Indian guidelines, it is US guidelines, okay? Uh, you can consume, you have to consume anywhere between 3000 to 5000 ORAC. Now, uh, this ORAC, please write it down, oxygen radical absorbance capacity, okay? Uh, we don't measure it in mg or ng, like it is not in milligrams or nanograms. It is measured in terms of oxygen radical absorbance capacity, okay? Oxygen radical absorbance capacity, anywhere between 3000 to 5000 per day, it is considered optimum. Again, I am repeating, there are no official guidelines according to Indian RDA for the upper limit or the maximum level for antioxidant consumption. But according to USDA guidelines, 3000 to 5000 ORCA units per day is considered optimal. ORCA again is oxygen radical absorbance capacity. Yeah, I think uh, there was a question, uh, the same, I think the same person. Is there, is, is there any gender difference in the consumption of antioxidants? As far as uh, I know, as far as I have read, there is no much gender changes in antioxidant consumption or requirements. But in future, if I come to know of any research studies which speak about that, I'll update you. Okay, any more questions, please ask in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer you.